Hi, and welcome to How to Improve Science Performance Through Strategic Note-Taking. Welcome. Today we are going to be talking about Newton's third law of motion. As you recall, Sir Isaac Newton developed Newton's three laws of motion. So far we have talked about Newton's first law of motion, most commonly called the law of inertia. We have also talked about Newton's second law, which states force equals mass times acceleration. Consider these shopping carts. One is full and one is empty. The full shopping cart will require much more force to accelerate it or move it. From our previous discussions, we remember that a force is a push or a pull on an object that results from its interaction with another object. Forces result from interactions. According to Newton, whenever objects A and B interact with each other, they exert forces upon each other. When you sit in your chair, your body exerts a downward force on the chair, and the chair exerts an upward force on your body. There are two forces resulting from this interaction, a force on the chair and a force on your body. Make a note of this. These two forces are called action and reaction forces and are the subject of Newton's third law of motion. Write this down. Newton's third law is, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. The statement means, and please note this, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. There is a pair of forces acting on two interacting objects. The size of the forces on the first object equals the size of the force on the second object. It also is important to note the direction of the force on the first object is opposite to the direction of the force on the second object. Forces always come in pairs, equal and opposite action-reaction pairs. You need to know that Newton's law simply states all forces act in pairs. If a force is exerted, another force occurs that is equal in size and opposite in direction. Action and reaction force pairs are present even though there is no motion. For example, a book sitting on a table. The book is pushing down on the table. The reaction force is the force exerted up on the table that pushes on the book. The force applied by the book is equal to the force applied by the table. This is a balanced force. There is no motion. When a person is swimming, the reaction force is the water pushing on the swimmer's hands. The reaction forces are what moves the swimmer forward. The action force and reaction force are a pair. The two forces are equal in size but opposite in direction. The statement of Newton's third law is deceptively simple. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. The terms action and reaction refer to forces. The key to getting this law right is un understanding action-reaction pairs. Pairs means two. So only two objects are in an action-reaction pair. Consider you standing on a carpet. Newton's third law reaction to the floor holding you up is you pushing the floor down. You on the floor and the floor on you. 
are an action-reaction pair. That is why the carpet is compressed. Newton's third law of motion, simply put, if you push an object, that object pushes back in the opposite direction, equally hard. This simple desktop toy is called Newton's Cradle. It is a really good demonstration of Newton's third law of motion. If you pull back the sphere at one end and let go of it, the sphere swings back and hits the next sphere. Its force is carried through the whole line of spheres, making the sphere at the opposite end fly up. The spheres in the middle stay still. So for every action, the sphere at one end hitting the line of spheres, there is an equal and opposite reaction, the sphere at the opposite end swinging up. What will happen if you pull back two spheres and let it go? That is right. If you pull back two spheres and let go, two spheres swing up at the opposite end. Sports provide so many great examples of Newton's third law of motion. For example, consider the interaction between a baseball bat and a baseball. The baseball makes contact with the bat and forces the bat to the left. The bat forces the ball to the right with a force that is equal in size and opposite in direction. Together, these two forces exerted upon two different objects form the action-reaction force pair. Similarly, a baseball player catching a ball in his mitt. The baseball pushes the glove backwards and the glove pushes the baseball forwards. A bowling ball pushes the pins forward. The pins in turn push the bowling ball backward with equal and opposite force. If you blow up a balloon and let it go, the action of the air rushing out of the balloon causes the reaction of the balloon flying up in the opposite direction. Once again, in equal, equal in size and opposite in direction. A variety of action-reaction force pairs occur in nature. Consider the propulsion of a fish through water. A fish uses its fins to push backwards, but a push on the water will only serve to accelerate the water. Since forces result from mutual interactions, the water must also be pushing the fish forwards, propelling the fish through the water. The size of the force on the water equals the size of the force on the fish. The direction of the force on the water, which is backwards, is opposite the direction of the force on the fish, which is forwards. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction, equal in size and opposite in direction. Action, reaction force pairs make it possible for a fish to swim. The next time you watch the flying motion of birds, remember this. A bird flies by use of its wings. The wings of a bird push air downwards. Since forces result from mutual interactions, 
the air must also be pushing the bird upwards. The size of the force on the air equals the size of the force on the bird. The direction of the force on the air, downwards, is opposite the direction of the force on the bird, upwards. For every action, there is an equal in size and opposite in direction reaction. Action-reaction force pairs make it possible for birds to fly. While driving down the road, a firefly strikes the windshield of a bus and makes a quite obvious mess in front of the bus driver. This is a clear case of Newton's third law of motion. Which of the two forces is greater, the force on the flyer firefly or the force on the bus? Please make note of the following five ideas. Newton's third law tells us forces always occur in pairs. Force pairs always occur at interaction or contact points. Number three, each force in a force pair has the same magnitude or strength. Number four, each force in a force pair points in the opposite direction. And number five, each force in a force pair acts on a different system. To summarize the laws of motion, the story starts with this fellow in England named Sir Isaac Newton. A little bit stuffy, bad hair, but quite an intelligent guy. He worked on developing calculus and physics at the same time. During his work, he came up with three basic ideas that are applied to physics. The ideas have been tested and verified so many times over the years that scientists now call them Newton's three laws of motion. The first law says that an object at rest tends to stay at rest, and an object in motion tends to stay in motion with the same direction and speed. Motion or lack of motion cannot change without an unbalanced force acting. Newton's second law shows that if you exert the same force on two objects of different mass, you will get different accelerations or changes in motion. The acceleration of the smaller mass will be greater or more noticeable. The effect of a 10 Newton force on a golf ball would be much greater than that same force acting on a truck. The difference in acceleration is entirely due to the differences in mass. Newton's third law says, for every action force, there is an equal and opposite reaction force. Forces are found in pairs. For example, if you are on a skateboard pushing on the wall with a force of 50 newtons, the wall is pushing on you with a force of 50 newtons pushing in the opposite direction. That concludes our lecture on Newton's third law of motion. Thank you for joining us on how to improve science performance through strategic note-taking.